It's a dreamy fall day here in the scenic river valley. As beautiful as it is, this river is also the first of several question marks between me and this mystery lake that I've been wondering about for several years. Can't find any information about it online except for satellite imagery. So I've created a map from that. And thankfully I also have the benefit of a drone. This was huge. I just flew it and got some really valuable information as to the condition of these trails. It looks like this is going to be my route up from this little pond. It would be the first thing I try anyway. It's going to take me potentially all day today and tomorrow to do about a three kilometer portage plus this paddle and perhaps trail maintenance as well. But the reward looks pretty sweet. I was hoping to access the river here, but it looks like it'd be a fair bit of work to get back up river at the end. So I've headed 10 kilometers down river to my backup option. It adds a bit of distance, but it looks pretty scenic. And based on what I saw on satellite in the topo map, it should be pretty smooth sailing. I'm well on my way up this river. Very scenic so far with fog colors. And I've got about 10 kilometers on this river where I hope to camp tonight on that pond where it looks like a trail starts. And then I'll scout that out and start tomorrow morning hauling all this gear over there once I have a better sense of what the right direction is. So I hit a swift with pretty good current, not enough depth to the water to get some really hard paddle strokes in. So I'm just going to wait it, probably be waiting more, so I'm just going to get in. Beautiful river. Got a few kilometers left. There's some big piles of flawless white sand here, complete with animal tracks. Put some moose tracks over here and, whoop. Oh, interesting. Oh, that could be bear. Could be a black bear. And then something's been sliding down here like an otter, beaver, muskrat. Just about a kilometer to go and I'm passing by a creek mouth which is actually the outlet for the lake that I'm trying to get to but on satellite it looked like quite a mess it looked like there was a lot of trees down in the in the river and yeah so I think it would just be much harder it seems like a perfect way to get in but I don't think so there's also not much water in it by the looks of it yeah just out of curiosity, I had to poke my nose in. There's some blowdown across the river right away, and I just ground it out on bottom. So, back we go. Got to the entrance of that pond, and it unfortunately is looking very dry, which is going to make things a lot tougher. It's about 400 meters to the actual pond. So, I'm going to send up the drone again and take advantage of that view.
it looks like there's just enough water in this creek for me to drag the canoe up it. Uh, worst case, I'll portage over land. And there's actually a track there from what looks like an ATV or something like that. Maybe an Argo, an amphibious ATV that they use to get across the river because I don't know any other way of getting across. But anyway, um, it's definitely possible to get in there. So I'll get into the pond and go from there. So here we go. Aerial footage can be deceiving. Everything looks pretty easy up there. You're like, oh, I could do that, sure. Hopefully it doesn't get too messy. And you can see all these old dead heads here. Clearly they're not naturally dead logs. They've been cut, but they've been here for a long time. This river used to be log driven, so they would send logs down the river to get them to market. I think as recently as about 50 or 60 years ago. So still lots of remnants here. They look kind of spooky down there. Yeah, it always looks easier on the drone. I'm on that ATV track now. And yeah, because the creek did not look very nice for dragging up, at least not to start. So I'm just gonna portage. It's not too long, close to half a kilometer. Yeah, clearly tracks here and some wolf poop. So I'm following those ATV tracks. The grass is growing tall in between the tracks, so obviously it's not used all the time. But I think I saw a trapper's cabin on one of the ponds ahead, so I figured that's what these tracks are from. All right, that's not bad. Everything I do on the way in, I gotta do on the way out too, <laughs> which is a major consideration, but that's not a big addition. So I brought over the food barrel just to lighten the load for the next two trips. I'll get to that end of the pond and hopefully camp there, schedule at the trail, and start fresh tomorrow. Coming through with the canoe, and this day has, has gotten longer than expected, but that's kind of par for the course for exploratory wilderness trips. If the rest of the way is clear as it looked like it might be on drone, then overall I would call that a win. Always feels great to be at the end of a portage and I'm just on the tiny little pond. So imagine how great it's gonna to feel to get to that lake, which looked incredible on the drone. Pretty cool spot to spend the night. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. These tracks continue here. I'll never, it'll never cease to amaze me where I find a cash boat. And the trail continues there. There's also a trap back here. Looks like more of a live trap. Getting late in the canoeing season. Days are getting much shorter. That sun's gonna go down fast. And I'm on this small pond, which I normally kind of avoid camping on, especially drawing water from, but thankfully the water here is beautifully clear. got camp chores done as I'm losing the sun. Big pan of cheese and potato pierogies, fried onion. And while I wait for that to cool down, some wolf juice. Cheers to a solid first day. As I was coming into this pond today, I was thinking, what other hobby out there is there where you would spend two days straight of physical labor just to get to do the thing you want to do, get to this lake? 
But then I, I was just realizing that it, this is this is as much a part of the enjoyment as actually getting to the lake, the the exploration, the adventure, and just finding question marks, using my body. It's great fun. It's my wilderness addiction. It's certainly my biggest addiction. Although, on that note, my more material addiction is chips, and in particular nacho chips. So I have, I have no self-control with chips. So I brought this to test myself and see if I could make it the full week, if I'm out here for a week, without eating them. Normally at home, if, I, if chips are in the house, I can't think about anything else. Like I just have to eat them. Big bag, two bags, whatever. They just have to be in me. <laughs> so this is my little sub challenge. Even though I could eat it now, shave 84 grams off my pack, not crush them all, and just enjoy them and not delay gratification. It's not the point. So we'll see if I make it. Scotch tends to bring on the munchies a little bit, so. And if you're wondering about the mustache, I didn't lose a bet. Erin and I are getting married in about six weeks and she's joked that she wants to see what I'm hiding under the beard all this time because I haven't clean shaven in all the time we've been together. I haven't clean shaven in, I don't know, six, seven years. So I finally surprised her and did it one day, but kept the mustache for dramatic effect. The beard will be back, don't worry. Mmm. Hard to imagine this little water body supporting much aquatic life, but... I have seen some surface breaches. It could just be insects or something like that, but gotta give it a, tr a try. Oh, yeah, getting hit. Oh, yeah, definitely got hit by a fish. Didn't get a look at it though. It's a trout. Oh no, it's a tiny, tiny pike. Okay, that makes more sense. I was gonna say, if there are trout in here, that's just crazy. Yeah, just a little pike. Thank you. Morning. Chilly start to day two, and I'm weighing my options here. Really, it boils down to two. Do I take the long, safe route, look safe, that's three kilometers of portaging, which means three kilometers there with the first load, three kilometers back, and three kilometers with the second load, canoe and food barrel, or try and cut through these ponds. I can't see any way to getting directly to the ponds aside from a bushwhack. Really tough call. I think I'm going to scout this on foot first, see what a bushwhack would be like, and go from there. So that's the three kilometer trail that way, and the roughly 800 meter trail to the pond this way. Great trails, can't believe it. So that fork in the trail wasn't what I thought. It started taking me southeast, so I turned around, going back, and I'll take the other fork. That's the value of scouting a trail before you portage it. Saves a lot of frustration. As a navigation aid, I use Avenza Maps, and I put topo maps on here, which are free. Again, these are the tracks I digitized at home, so that helps a lot. Plus, I, I uh, cached some offline satellite images on Google Maps. It's a useful reference too. These are almost certainly old forestry roads. You can see the old clear cuts on the drone and satellite. And you can see that the regen is coming in. It's different color and height. So. But now they're ATV trails and it's amazing the network of ATV trails through old forestry roads. You can really get some 
interesting places. So the pond isn't far down that way, but the woods are a little thick. It's certainly doable, could be bushwhacked, but it's more so the bushwhack at the other end that is just a total question mark and could be really ugly. It looks kind of muskeggy at the north end, so I think I'm gonna take the three kilometer trail. stick stove going, hot on for tea and a big hearty breakfast. I'm feeling good about this. Three kilometers, it'll be long, but it's really clear, excellent condition. Looks dry even, so a couple hours, two or three hours, I'll be there. Sun's just busting through. Warm up this chilly morning. And breakfast is served. Hash browns, black bean mix, tomatoes, cheese. So I'm leaving a bit of gear here to shave some weight. My white water gear, including helmet, paddle, and dry suit and some spent batteries and a folding bow saw that I brought for trail maintenance that um, I don't think I'm gonna need. And I'm setting up the trail cam here in case a bear or anything comes sniffing. At least I'll get some answers out of it. No food in there, of course. All packed up and I'm loaded up for the first run. Net with some odds and ends, camera bag, and main pack with everything I can get packed inside of there. And I'll be back for these guys. So I took the first load about half a kilometer and I'm going to take the canoe well past this for the second load and then I'll continue leapfrogging the gear as opposed to doing it all in one shot. There are at least a few advantages for me for doing it that way. First it's physically easier. It's nice to give my body, especially shoulders, a little break every 15 minutes or so when I go back with no load to get the previous load. Two, mentally I find it a lot more pleasant to break up a huge job into several smaller jobs. Third, no load is left unattended for long periods, so if a bear happened to come by, I'm sure lots of animals use these trails, it wouldn't have a, a long opportunity to sniff around at my food barrel, let's say. And lastly, if I was to sprain my ankle or something like that, I'd never be too far away from either part of my gear. So this has all of my shelter, that has all of my food, and with this approach I'm never too far from either one. Making good progress here. And it's hard to believe what a good trail this is. You could drive a car through much of it, but these old forest roads that are built on sand, they hold up very well through time, as opposed to something with rich soil, which really grows in quickly. Looking at it from the drone on the first flight yesterday, my signal wasn't great for the controller to the drone, so I couldn't see it that clearly. And it looked like a boardwalk or an old rail line. Sometimes those will be found in the bush in random places. But no, it's just a really well-defined track. In the last couple hundred meters here, and the trail forks, on satellite I couldn't see anything in this section, so I'm just gonna try left. It looks a bit more well-worn. Almost there. You can see the lake. Wow. Wasn't expecting that. 
a little shack with a proper boat launch and dock. Wow, someone has made themselves very homey here. Okay, the canoe's about a kilometer pack, and hopefully this this juice will be worth the squeeze. Oh wow! Oh man, that's a good feeling. Looks just like I hoped. Can't wait to paddle up there. First I need a little fuel and I'm dying to dig into those chips right now. I'm not giving in yet. Got a chocolate bar as a treat and some trail mix. That'll do for now. So now that I'm into the lake, it's time for a new map. And look at this impressive thing. Oh keeps going. Oh, it keeps going. Oh my goodness. When will it end? There. So, deepest point, 312 feet around the middle. Very deep. Looks like there are a couple of trappers cabins here on this old map, which was surveyed in June 11 to 12, 1962 by investigators Goddard, Gibson, and cartographer Hull. So I've come in around here, I'm looking out to this island, it has a small lake on it, the outflow of the lake is there, primary inflow is here, and it's about 12 kilometers from top to bottom. Got lots to see. Ooh, <laughs> this lake is cold, but that's exactly what I wanted for my feet. Those dogs are barking. The lake looks amazing, and I can't wait to explore it, but I just have to look for camp today. I'm going to start out by heading to the island and get my line wet. See what's in here. This lake is even more beautiful than I thought, and the wilderness addict in me just got a huge hit. Can't wait to find a campsite. If I find a beauty, I'm gonna be just hyped. I'm on the north side of the island, and I was really hoping to camp here, but it's pretty bushy and bouldery. The view would have been outstanding though, look at that. But there's a little beach over there on the east shore, and that might have a pretty similar view. Let me check it out. Nice spot, but not really seeing anywhere for a hammock. It's pretty thick. The view for camp too, not too shabby. Have a nice view of sunset, the clouds don't obscure it. Nice flat rock for cooking on. Sort of a natural path into the woods here. And after I cleared these dead trees out, a nice little hamping spot in the cedar grove. Much needed. Got some pad thai, did a backpacking meal because energy levels are low. 
be delicious. Peaceful end to a great day, and I am so ready for bed. Can't wait to wake up and explore this lake tomorrow. What a scene this morning. Unbelievable lake. Can't wait to get on my way. Just had breakfast, tea, and I'll pack up and get out there. Leaving camp, it was decent, but I'm hoping to find something better to spend the next two or three nights, and ideally something central to the lake. It's supposed to be overcast today, potential for rain in the coming days, so I'm hoping to set up in a really good spot. First fish on from this lake. And what do we have? Pike. Not a bad fish. Thank you. So the north half of this lake burnt maybe 20 years ago, if I recall correctly. You can even see it on satellite. And I'm coming into that section now. There's a huge beaver lodge here in this little cove. And he's stashed some branches for future munching. A little pantry. That's a big one. Cool to look at places on satellite and when I fly the drone I get a look at them that's great too it gives a bit more detail but there's just nothing like seeing it on the ground or on the water at ground level awe-inspiring what a place I'm around the middle of the lake so the deepest point over 300 feet is right out there and the trappers cabin marked on that old bathymetry study from over 60 years ago it's supposed to be over there as well, though I can't see anything from here. I'll try and inspect it on the way back, go around the lake on the other side when I come back. This is one of the most beautiful paddles I've had in a while. And to have this whole lake to myself on a nice fall day is just too good. My only concern is, is hammocking opportunities. The trees are very small still from the regen and it's going to be slim pickings.
There's a little grove of evergreens across the lake. I'm gonna cross and check it out, see if it can be a viable camp. Oh, please let there be somewhere for the hammock here. The spot is perfect. The views are unbelievable. Wind is kicking up as forecasted, so it'd be nice to have a base camp set up. Fingers crossed. So not only is this spot gonna work for me, but it is a dream come true. And this old cedar grove that got spared by the fire, I'll show you around. First and foremost, the view is just incredible. Great landing for the canoe, good water access. Again, the cedar grove. So this is really interesting that there's a cut here. This is a spot I hoped to explore because there's a little creek running up here. I can see that on the topo map and that takes you to a very interesting back lake and it actually looks like there might be a trail because I'm seeing some cut things and there's a, a martin box over there so the trapper obviously runs through here and if it does start to rain I bet this is going to flush beautifully it's already got some water running through it and I've got some great options for the hammock I couldn't be happier tons of beautiful cedar stick fuel too All right, tarp set up just in case it starts raining. Gotta pitch a low toward the exposure in case the wind starts driving rain in. And nice and high in here so I can cook. Got lots of stick fuel. I'm giddy. Just love this spot. get my water from the lake. Figured I'd give this little mountain stream a try. Still gotta filter it though. It's beautiful. <laughs> yes. What a dream. Oh, I'm so happy I'm here for two nights, maybe three. So much to do. Taking a little break here with my book and immediately my wilderness addiction is kicking in, aka wanderlust. And that little trail I saw potentially leading to that mountain lake, that's the first thing I want to do. I'm on the stunning lake, just made a great camp here, and that's not enough. I gotta see the next one. Oh, it's a sickness. And or Farley Moe had already spoke to that in this book. It's called People of the Deer, and in the book, Farley, as a young man, is going to Nunavut to try and get a better understanding of some Inuit, inland Inuit, who are very disconnected from the rest of the world at this time, post-World War II. That's Hudson Bay, so it's subarctic, it's extremely remote. And in it, he says, it is, I suppose, a sort of disease. The arctic fever has no effect on the body but lives only in the mind, filling its victim with a consuming urge to wander again and forever through those mighty spaces where the caribou herds flow like living rivers over the roll of the tundra. windy this afternoon so it's a perfect time to be off the lake. I'm going to do this little hike. Here's to be a trail here from the trap line. 
that's a Pine Martin box right there. So I'm, it stands to reason that it is a trapper's trail. It's only 300 meters or so into the woods to get there. So even if it's a bushwhack, I should be able to lay eyes on this lake. Look at this. Just can't believe it. This is the wilderness addiction. Feeling this good has to be addictive. So I'm making easy progress here on this trap line and I'll be in the lake soon. That's what I'm looking for. It's right behind these hills. It should be stunning. And a little map tip here. If you're wondering what way water flows, in this case it's pretty obvious because this little thing is obviously going to flow into the big lake, but fingers of contour lines, if you imagine them as fingers, they always point upstream. So that's upstream, that means this is downstream, flows this way. Just about there, and they've even got a flatback canoe. Wow. What a slice of heaven someone has curved out here. Probably have it all to themselves the majority of the time. And it's a little gem. Oh man. Water levels are held up by this beaver dam here. That's the view I wanted to see. What a lake. I might spend one of the days portaging in here. There's the canoe there, but I don't know. I'm not good at using other people's stuff without asking anyway. And it wouldn't be that hard to bring the canoe up here at all. So yeah, we'll see. Just happy to get a look at it. One thing's for sure. If someone left a canoe here, there's good fish in here. There's another lake, maybe another 400 meters that way and maybe that's the honey hole. But in any case, I bet there are fish to be had in here and I bet they're trout. It only took me a few minutes to commit to doing this. I told you it's an addiction. All right, let's see what's in here. myself a snag. That's the big hill or mountain that I was looking at yesterday. So it's pretty cool to be here on this little lake beside it. Coming in here may seem like another addiction. Fishing addiction. Fishing is actually just icing on the cake now. I don't even need to fish. And it's ironic because it was why I got into backcountry camping. I did one backcountry trip with friends, had the best fishing I had ever experienced and I was hooked immediately. So that became my drive to get further north, more off the beaten path, and eventually I got enough fishing time that that addiction just went away. And now as I bring it, I'd, I could leave my fishing rod at home and I'd be fine. I'd much rather, I'd have a much harder time leaving my camera at home. I love that aspect of it now. What a spot. Those hills back there are from the main lake that I'm on and then yeah the view here is just spectacular for Sean it's a trout time no oh kidding me there's definitely a trout and brook trout are out of season so I don't actually want it to be brook trout lake trout I'm just at the end of the season it's starting to rain, so I'm gonna have to get back. I'll troll on my way back, though. So that fish that I lost, I couldn't see it because the water's really dark here, and it was small and rolling like crazy. But I just had one follow to the boat, and it was a brook trout. So I'm calling it. 
um, yeah, for the rest of the season. Plus, the rain is threatening. It's gotten pretty chilly and very windy, so time to get back for a nice warm dinner. non calzones tonight and I think I'm prepared to say that this is a top 10 campsite ever ambiance is off the charts with this babbling brook nice fresh water source too and a huge freshwater lake right there with an incredible view great water access lovely spot for the hammock into this these very old cedars I don't know it could be top 10 it's always a lot of recency bias to that claim though. I'm not trying to sound like a false stereotype, but I've got a cozy blanket, a good book, and a mug of tea. Combined with this view, after a day like that, this is simply exquisite. Day four, got a couple of breakfast burritos to fuel me for a while. I'm gonna take a good paddle around this lake, which looks nice and calm today. Can't wait. This is heaven, dead calm. Got this whole lake to myself to explore. Still have the northern third of the lake that I haven't seen. Um, somewhere around there. And yeah, plenty left, including the inlet at the top, the primary inflow, and a bay. Ah. Small pike. There's a beaver in front of me and a loon calling over there. Ah, like I said, the fish are just icing on the cake.
leave them in the water. Nice. Well, I never want this day to end in this paddle. But I'm at the north end of the lake where the creek flows in. I'm gonna check that out. And then I'll eventually work my way back, slowly. As slowly as possible. Very shallow here at the mouth of the stream. Tons of tracks here. Mostly wolf. There's moose. But yeah, lots of canine tracks. Nice little paddle on the creek and back to the lake. You can see the high water mark there. It's about two and a half feet higher than, than right now. But it's late in the season. I've seen most of this lake now and I'm even happier with my camp because there hasn't been much else except for this beach should be a good spot for a tent. You can see uh, old charred remains of the forest fire from, yeah, it's probably been 20 years. But there wouldn't have been good hammocking here, so yeah, super happy with my spot. Glad I have another night or two there. Sun's finally busted through as I approach camp. It's just across the lake. And there's a tree behind me that looks cartoonish. It's got almost nothing all the way up and then a really dense growth at the top, which is called a witch's broom. I'm gonna slowly work my way across the lake and conclude this amazing paddle. What a great day. Getting some water for dinner, and I've gotten most of my water from the stream because it's just so convenient right beside where I cook. And it's funny because there's at least one family of beavers defecating into that small lake above, which runs down here. It's filtered somewhat, but still there's the potential for parasites, namely Jardia, which has the nickname Beaver Fever, although that's kind of unfair to put all the blame on beavers. But if there was a human family up there that lived up there and used that as like their septic system, I would never drink this water. It's funny how that works. 
And whether the water comes from the stream or the lake doesn't really matter because it's getting boiled or filtered either way. While I wait for my water to boil on the fire, it's time for the other fire water. Wolf juice. Scotch. I've been talking about my pseudo addictions on this trip and I really don't mean to make light of that word because it's dead serious and this is a prime example of it. Booze, substance abuse in general. And some people don't like that I bring booze on my trips and show it, which I think is a little unfair. I think I'm pretty good about it. Like I'm having a swig or two per night or three, if if any. The last two nights I had zero. Even at home, I have uh, I only drink on Friday and Saturday unless there's a special occasion, just to avoid getting into bad habits. Because the rational side of me says that it's a waste of time, money, energy, calories. And I've been trying to lose some belly fat that I gained during when I got injured earlier this year. So you think I would have extra incentive. And the government says that it's carcinogenic. So what a puzzling thing to do to be drinking this and, and packing it in, hauling it out here. I guess it speaks to the chemical reward system in the mind. That's the root of addiction. Also, the irrationality of humans. <laughs> we do a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense. And ultimately, I think we're just we're slaves to the chemicals in our, in our body. But anyway, I think all things uh, in moderation, right? So, cheers to irrational indulgences in moderation. Finished dinner and I'm just a little bit hungry still calling to me. So I'm going to use the old brush the teeth trick. Once you brush your teeth, you don't want to have to brush them again. And I'm going to watch the sun go down. can't see the sun, but I can see it on the hills, which is maybe even better. Tea and a nice hearty ranchero soup this morning, and I was expecting today to be kind of stormy and thunderstorms, but in the SATCOM forecast it looks like it might just be overcast now, so could be a good fishing day again. Heading out onto the lake, and I'm going to spend the next night here. This is too good. Why would I leave? Got plenty of stick fuel dry under the tarp in case it does rain, the cooking station, gravity filter. And the best view you could ask for. Another calm day, too. Can't believe that luck. So the only part of the lake I haven't seen now is the southwest shore. I'm going to just work my way down to those old trap cabins marked on this map. See if there's anything left. And yeah, go from there. Beautiful paddling day. Absolute glass. I can't get enough of this view. And when I see the forest fire regen, I think about the beard of woods that was on this land at one time, shaven clean by fire, with only the odd mustache of cedar and spruce left to survive. But eventually the stubble returns, and eventually it'll be a full beard again, someday really hits home for some reason.
the side of those cabins is just about 100 meters ahead of me. I don't see anything, and it looks like it was it was part of the burn, so the meadow got burnt to the ground. So I haven't seen anything from the water. I'm going to check it out on land. No sign of it. It should have been very close to here. Okay, Whoa. first bit of anything, just an old can with a bit of wire, huh. so far it seems like the th if there was something here, it was incinerated and since been covered up by the earth, can't find a thing aside from that can. Clue number two, just another old can, underwhelming clue, I want something juicy. Nice erratic. Found a rough trail, could just be a beaver trail to this little pond. Cool. There's a small lake back that way too. No luck. Seems like that one's been reclaimed by the forest. If I had gotten here and there was a, a cabin standing there, it would have been like, okay, cool, a cabin. But because I couldn't find it, the wanderlust is activated. So I was wandering all around there for a while. But not to be. Another mountain ash. Really nice one. Another pike. The pike took the hook in a bad way, so I just dispatched it with a club, and it's out of its misery, and I'm having pike for lunch. Perfect eating size, too. So I have this bungee attached to the rear thwart, and I can just latch it onto something on shore when I want to get out of the canoe for a moment, or something like that. It can also be used as a stringer to keep the fish cool in the water and keep the pike and it's slime out of the boat. I never put a live fish on a stringer though. I just find that cruel. But I just dispatched it with a club. Just keep a nice beaver chewed stick in the boat. And I'm using single barbless hooks, which feels a lot better in terms of catch and release, which is still, I don't know, it's a tough one. But anyway, it makes a small piercing in the fish as opposed to having to rip something out. Much more pleasant if you hook yourself as well, or your dog, or someone else. But sometimes, you still manage to take it in a bad way, and that's a keeper. Pike are a great eating fish. Just gotta watch out for the Y bones. I just use the five fillet method, it's quite simple. Take off the back strap first, so then you can see the Y bones. Once the back is off, you're able to see those Y bones. You can cut just on the outside of them. And the back strap is a nice piece of meat. One fillet. Those white lines there, those are the Y bones. So I cut on the outside of them. This big fillet. Got a fire ready to light here. Before I started filleting, just gotta light the fuse, oil, batter, and the fish. Can't wait.
For nice crispy pieces, I like to chunk it up to maximize the batter surface area. And don't skimp on the oil, the batter, or the heat. Hot on for tea after to wash it down. Oh yeah, this is good living. Mm. Very filling, satisfying meal. Wind really picked up while I was doing that. Let's turn this into like a blowtorch. My setcom weather forecast is pretty odd today. It's got zero mils, overcast and then chance of rain at 9. At 11 it says 56 mils of rain, only a 17% chance, but that's 2 inches. So there must be some really isolated, severe storms around. And it could either hit or be nothing. I've actually been hoping for some rain at this site because I want to see how the stream responds to it. You can see the high water mark is like 3 feet above in the, with a freshet in the spring. This would be raging pretty good. In people of the deer, Farley Mowat is camped at the base of a river at ice out in the Arctic where the flood is immense. There's feet, many feet of snow. And he describes it as like cataclysmic when the river breaks into the bay where it's frozen on the lake still. That's something I've always wanted to see, but it's a pretty hard thing to time and get to the mouth of a frozen river. So yeah, I hope it storms. Just got a message from Erin on the SATCOM. She told me the Jays made the playoffs. If you hadn't noticed, I'm a fan. And sports is another one of my pseudo addictions. Not sure if it's a healthy one. If it adds or subtracts from my life. Hard to say sometimes because I'm a diehard Leafs fan, hockey fan, so that's been tough. Anyway, for now, my team is in and all is well. So cheers. Until next week when I'm fuming. I think this will barely show on camera, but there's tons of lightning right now. If it comes this way, it should be good. This is the scene in the horror movie where the black bear is creeping up behind me. It can only be seen in the flashes of light. I can hear the rain coming. I can feel just a little too. Wow. Lightning is constant now. Thunder is getting closer. They are coming.
toads taking shelter under the tarp. It's gonna be okay, bud. Uh-oh. Alright, it's starting to get intense. The wind's getting crazy. everything as pinned down here as I can just driving the tarp down the wind make sure my sleep system stays dry we got everything pinned down heavy rocks but suddenly once the storm hits it never feels like enough Wicked storm last night. Finally got a sunrise on this lake now. Putting away a big bucket of granola. We got an eight kilometer paddle into a headwind on this big lake. And then a three kilometer portage, so I need some fuel. Just about packed up. And it's really been one of my favorite sights ever. The view, the stream, a private brook trout lake there if it was in season just behind. The river, the stream, didn't rise much. Hardly at all. Surprising. I'm on my way and I'm about to go around a little point where I'll be fully exposed to this wind. It's going to be a long eight kilometers, but the upside is I'll be looking forward to the three kilometer portage by the end of this. Finally back to the south end of the lake, that was a tedious paddle and as expected I am excited to do this long portage to get off the water. One last look, what a spectacular lake, totally worth it. Feels good. I'm back on the river I started on on day one. Just put in a, a big day. After that headwind paddle and the three kilometer portage, 
I was still feeling pretty good and had some daylight left. So I grabbed my cash gear and continued across the pond, did the half kilometer portage back to the river. And now I'm looking for a nice spot to spend the last night of the trip, past a bunch of beautiful white sand beaches on my way up river. So I'm looking for one of those. happy I kept going instead of camping at the first campsite again. Found a sweet spot, set up a hammock up there and some spruces. Awesome view, sunset, perfect. Some cheddar and broccoli noodles for dinner, much needed. Energy levels crashed. So, I'll keep this short. I've got some mint tea. That's about it. That's my night. Oh, it's nice to be on the river. Still intact. It's by far the longest I've ever not eaten chips that were in my possession. Previous record was probably about 12 to 24 hours. So. Bar wasn't high, but I'm satisfied. Tomorrow, all mine. Lovely start to day seven. Wonderful paddle on the river this morning to round out this trip. It's unseasonably warm as well. Early October, a few days in the forecast, it said freezing temperatures and rain, so lucked out. And I was reading People of Deer last night. Moa is uh, such a good writer. And there was another quote that stood out to me about wanderlust. He was on an extremely remote canoe trip in northern Canada in what is now Nunavut, trying to learn about the people of the deer, and he was with one of the Inuit who was their guide. And he wrote, Here was a vast, unnamed and unmapped lake that no white man had ever looked upon before. This lake, whose western shore lay below the line of the horizon, was an irresistible magnet to our restless curiosity. Where it should have shown upon the maps, there was nothing but blank white paper. 
The desire to sketch in a crude black outline on that version of expansive maps was, I suppose, the essence of the desire which makes most men yearn to push beyond known limits, whether in the flesh or in the mind. Look at that. Vivid rainbow to close out the trip. And it's pointing at the lake I was on, which in these fall colors truly is a pot of gold. Wow. It's pretty much a double now. Ah. Uh, go home at peace. For about a week or two, and then the wanderlust kicks in again. It's hard then to canoe trip at this time of year. It's so scenic, fall colors, geese flying overhead. And in October, you never know how many canoe trips are left before freeze up, so I'm soaking this up. So I finally get to feed my chip addiction, literally feed it, and I've come down to the highway now where I got cell phone signal back, and that is another addiction, a huge one that I'm without on the trips, but it's actually really liberating, and I kind of hate when I pick up cell phone signal on a trip, though it's rare. And there's one thing that I check first when I get back to signal. It's a thing that allows me to do this for a living. <laughs> 